yeah. we can just hold hands. Yeah. Just hold hands. Hold hands. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be like a little seance. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody seen that film Seance on a wet afternoon? Yeah. On a wet yeah. afternoon? What is that? Not it's a great know. film with Kim Stanley and I Richard Stanley. Attenborough. Oh my god. And it's not available on DVD. Wow. And it's really a great film. Seance on a wet afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a good afternoon to me. Yeah, yeah I know. Isn't that an amazing title? Yeah. <laughs> so eerie. So, Joe. Joseph or Joe? Either one. Okay. Um, so, could you relate to the guy in this movie? We don't often see a guy going through all this shit. Yeah. <laughs> we do it in real life. We just don't in the movie. Yeah, yeah all exactly. of our friends and all of our neighbors. I know, like, I'm like, I know this guy. Like, I know ten of these yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think every everybody, whether is guys there, or yeah, girls, guys can or relate girls. to this character. Um, we've all been there. So you've said uh, in the mornings to kind of prepare for the shoot, you would listen to Zoe's uh, She and Him mm -hmm. music. Is there anything that you listen to? Or is there anything else you listen to to kind of prep for the day? Or? Mm. I would listen to like lots of um, very like... I would listen to lots of music that would make me feel like... Um, happy and like everything was um, um, made me feel easy going I guess because it was um, you know a character who, who has a lot of stuff she, she leads a charmed life so um, that's sort of that was my way of preparing stubborn kind of fellow we listen to that a lot we listen to that a lot yeah <laughs> that was kind of the song and the uh, um, Mary and Faithful song I listen to a lot that um, as tears go by the her version of as tears go by. So j j this was a little bit of a different role for you. I mean, how did you feel about doing something like this? I was delighted to, yeah. to do it. Um, uh, different. I, I guess you're comparing it to some of the more dramatic yeah. stuff I've done recently. Well, you know I. I think that that's a big part of why this movie is so funny is that it's is that it's genuine, and that it's not just kind of shallow surface level gags, but that you know the humor is emotional, and I I wanted to bring the same emotional truth to this movie as I brought to or tried to bring to um, you know some of the quote unquote dramatic movies that I've done recently. Yeah. And Mark, Mark said you were just a natural when it came to the dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't sure you were going to be into it. <laughs> I was. That's kind of what you said. Uh, Zoe, in, in, the, in the, uh, the script, sort of the way that her, her, your character is set up, it's as a sort of ideal girl that all the, you know, all the mm -hmm. trouble she's caused in the past would have been. Uh, what is it like to read something like that and say they want you to play, like, you know, these, is that sort of like a big... Very flattered. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, to be honest, like, it's not obviously not the way I would think of myself. Uh, but I don't know that it would, like, if they had picked just, like, one of those girls that everyone normally just, like, thinks is, you know, like, one of the, the like, beauty girls, you know, there, mm -hmm. there are actresses that are just like, oh my god, she's just so amazingly beautiful, and that's, like, what you hear about that person, it's just, you know, that's their sort of thing. I don't think that would have worked, no. because this is, like, partially romanticizing, you know, a little bit of, um you know, quirkiness, I guess. Um, and, and that's what you kind of, I mean, I, that's why I feel like one of the I interesting things about the movie, but um, I certainly, you know, was very flattered that that, um, that Mark thought of me for this and um, that they cast me. She's and you're as beautiful as anyone. Oh, yeah. stop! <laughs> but she's a much more sort of interesting character. Like, she has levels and depth and she's a quirky yeah. girl and... Do you think that guys relate to that more? Because do guys prefer a woman with something about her? Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I don't think you can generalize guys. I think maybe some guys are scared of, a, of an individual woman. Um, I'm more attracted to a human being than, a, you know, if there's nothing to talk about, then what can really, you know, I don't know. It's hard to get turned on. Yeah. <laughs> there's no conversation. That's why I think it's so real, though, because it's like re two real yeah. people having real conversations yeah. that anybody could relate to. Mm -hmm. so that think... was what we were trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs>
And you, you just found together on set that you just sort of had, I mean, you just have We've a great... We've been friends for 10 years. Really? So you we did a movie together oh 10 man. years ago. It's, wow. kind of, it's kind of the opposite Leo and Kate thing, where you guys kind of go from a really serious movie where you're into a nice kind of breezy... <laughs> 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 That's funny. Yeah, exactly. True. Um, <laughs> Manic is kind of like Titanic. It's a little bit like that. Opposite, you know, it's, it's like a little bit like the, road kind yeah, of thing, revolutionary but, road, but just vice versa. <laughs> now we're this is our Titanic. Well, this is our Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. So it was it. It's you know easy because yeah. we're friends, and I have great respect and admiration for Joe, and um, he's cool. So <laughs> <laughs> that helps. It makes it so much easier to have. To yeah. be doing scenes like this and to play a relationship like this with someone who I'm friends with and who I trust and who I admire. And You're not like, nice to meet you. So uh, uh, they, they put uh, summer in a lot of blues to kind of signify, right. and kind of bring out your eyes, but also uh, to me I kind of saw it as, as kind of an homage like uh, you know, Dorothy and Wizard of Oz, Alice in oh, Wonderland, uh, I, or uh, what's it, or like uh, Wendy and Peter Pan, like kind oh, of. You're, I mean, do you find yourself that you think it's kind of like that, where you're, where Summer's in a world that she doesn't really have control of because it's his kind of perspective, hmm. or do you play it like? Well, you know, you know I, I, the, the whole thing was to make me stand out. They, you know, they wanted me to stand out in the movie, so um, to have a color that was only used one I mean it's used in the dance sequence because he's seeing everybody is like he's Wonderful. reminded of summer. Um, That's the only time. It's the only, the only time, time you see the color blue where she's not. Yeah, there. but no one else was allowed to wear blue and um if I wasn't wearing a lot of blue there would be like a big blue thing. Like I'd be <laughs> right next to tons of blue wallpaper or like a big, you know, blue poster or like there would be something giant and blue and I would be to be like, No kids tell me about the blue poster <laughs> So it was, you know, it was a cool um, thing, you know, that's sort of a cinematic, uh, um, subliminal. I've actually tried, I once tried to get somebody to do that for me in another movie. I was like, I really want to see it out. Can you do that? I could be the only one who wears like one color. And they're like, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so I was really happy that it was like Mark's idea. I think it speaks to the strength of of Mark that um, not only is he super technically savvy to be doing something with color like that, um, but he also knows how to tell stories and how to work with actors. And Normally, you find one or the other. Um, and to be honest, you know, like most people that are as good at crafting a scene of dialogue as Mark is wouldn't necessarily know how to do something sophisticated like that with the color. Yeah. And uh, he's 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 firing he's a on all very cylinders. observant yeah. individual. Did you enjoy doing the uh, sure, the karaoke scenes? Sorry, the karaoke scenes. Yeah, yeah. particularly when he's when he's miserable, time. which is hilarious. Yeah, um, thank you. Do you thank do you a lot of karaoke? Uh, sometimes. I'll I've done karaoke with you before. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, yeah, Joe got kicked out of karaoke. <laughs> Why? Um, no, nothing. I rocked too hard. He wasn't like he wasn't drunk or anything. He just was like got so into the song. They started like pulling down the curtain. And the guy what was like, you, "What were you singing?" Too, uh, too Black hot crows. to handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good song. Oh, yeah. And he was like pulling down the curtains, and the and the, the karaoke guy was like. The guy who puts on the karaoke night like every week is like, "What's going on?" And he's like, "I'm sorry, sir." I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to. You have to go. You have to. But you just couldn't get back up and sing. I don't get out of the place. No, no, no. You're like okay. He no, just not stand for life. He forbid no. to unleash any more of the rock. Yeah, you. Re I mean, you really. It was just the stage was too small for you. <laughs> That's what it was. It wasn't. I need, able, I need to be able to run around. Yeah, you got. You gotta have some room. He was. He was gonna bring the roll, but he yeah. said that for his back pocket. You need some props. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need some pyrotechnics. You need like a bird to bite the head off. <laughs> <laughs> need some broken glass <laughs> to shred my skin. <laughs> they pretty much have you singing in every film you do now. Is that just like requirement in your contract now? Um, I try to avoid it, actually. <laughs> Not avoid it, but I'm kind of like skeptical a little bit because I like, it's happened to me a lot like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if like, well, we got to figure
figure out an opportunity for you to sing. I'm like, you really don't. Like, because, <laughs> like, the thing is, like, it always, like, unless it's, like, a musical, it's always complicated because all of a sudden it's, like, you, like, have to sing in character and then mm. somebody has something to say about how you sing, mm. which is, like, that was the way I like to do it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, summer, so it was just, you know, karaoke. Well, same can be said for Joe getting punched in the face. I mean, brick you got. Oh, just right. <laughs> this is just, just the one, though. <laughs> I know how to sell a good punch, what yeah. can I say? Um, well, that's right. You do get punched in the face in a lot of movies. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of one that you haven't been punched in the face. I always get punched in the face. Yeah. I like I it. I noticed that. Mm-hmm. Is that. That's in your contract? Yeah. yeah. Contract? It's actually the only time I've ever actually been punched in the face in real life was doing a scene. Getting punched in the face. Really? Yeah, I don't start. I mean, I don't engage in fights. In general. Oh, yeah, yeah. I avoid them. Of course. But uh, but yeah, it's the only time I've been hit. In real life. You, somebody accidentally hit you? Yeah, we were uh, during brick. It was just one of the takes. He actually hit me, and no one knew because they thought it was fake until like, I did. Wow, that was really good. And just didn't get up. Did you get knocked out? Just for a second. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the film sort of the. The girl is the realist, and the guy is the one that's... We always seem to have these movie fantasies of the girl, the girls waiting for the knight in shining armour. And yeah. this is kind of a reversal, because it's like the guy thinks there's the one, and you're more the realist. Do you think well, that's more... Actually, well, more accurate in a way? Or is it um, I mean, I don't think it has anything to do with gender. Mm. That's the thing. It's like, and it's like we're, we're, we've been talking about this a lot, because people have said that. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, with our generation, like those gender roles aren't something that really can apply anymore. Like, there are lots of guys who get heartbroken, and there are lots of girls who are, um, you know, you know, cynical about it. Um, And, you know, I, I just find that people tend to be, like, you know, will vacillate between one extreme or the other. It's not, there's no, there's, there's no practicality about love because love's not like marriage and love is not like and the la- you know love being something that's lasting is not necessary. Um, so you know what's keeping people together is sort of the question. It's like it's like it's not necessary. It's not like people. It's not the same thing as in generations prior where you know you get married because you have to start a family and you those have to support rules. yourself yeah. and those are the rules and, and society is very much a part of enforcing those rules. That doesn't apply anymore. So what keeps people together? And that's the question. And and I think one of the things that this says about love is just that, um, you know, just because something doesn't last doesn't mean it doesn't have value. Mm-hmm. And just, and being romantic about something that lasts doesn't mean, you know, it. you're not always, you know, you know, that, that you will discover things and change, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, over the course of your life. So do you guys believe in romance? Do you believe in love at first sight? Do you think that's out there? or, or the one yeah, I think any there, everything or? is yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> it just depends on your point of view. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think, you can think of it, I feel that it exists. Anything and, you can think of is true. Well, in some way, it, it exists in thought form. So what exact if it has a name, then you're creating it. Exactly. Do, do you think um, you're a romantic person, Joe? Do you think that's out there? That I do think so, but what I I I, um, I think that certain um, cliches like that, like love at first sight, are uh, are dangerous because then you're letting someone else define it for you, and you have to make it for yourself you have to figure it out for yourself and you have to know that love um for you is definitively if it's real love it's going to be unlike anything anyone else has ever felt before so their descriptions of it are you know you can take what you want and leave the rest but it's never going to be summed up in someone else's uh line like love at first sight yeah so you've got to experience it for yourself really whatever you're going to. Thank you guys. Thank you.